Hello everyone and welcome back to the second part of how to paint Loom Boss on Giant Cave Squig. In this part I will mainly focus on the rider and the base to finish the model. So let's jump into it. Here is the list of colors which I will be using in this video. I will leave it down also in the description below too. So I have the head piece separate. I used that word forest as a base color for the head. I drilled a hole in the back and glued to a pin and screwed it onto an old wine cork to have an easy handle of the painting process. As for the body and armor, I have them separate and I base painted it with Abaddon Black. I focus first on the head. I use a Thonian Chemishade wash and with a medium layer brush I start applying an all even wash onto the Death World Forest base painted head. Bear in mind the skin process will be exactly the same also for the arms and other areas where the skin is. But because the armor part is quite messy I leave the other areas after the armor is done. Once it's completely dry, I am adding a thin layer of Colia Green Shade Wash just to have some of the deepest recesses more darker and get a better contrast, especially around the eye bags. Once the Collier Green Shade is dry, I use Scarsnick Green and I dry brush the head with a small dry brush to get all the raised surface a brighter green tone. Then I'm going to use Nurgling Green and I added just a little bit more water to have it more consistent, especially on the top of the head where the light is coming. I apply it and mainly layer it on the sharper edges of the face. Now I'm going to use Iron Rack Skin and with a small layer brush I start highlighting the sharpest features of the head. And with Deep Kim Flash, I do an extra fine highlight, mainly on the brows, the tip of the ears and the cheekbone. With the highlighting of the eye bags as well, it turned out a bit too bright, so I am using just a small amount of Collier Green Shade on the eye bags to tone them down, down a bit. Now I am going to apply Kerber Crimson Wash inside of the mouth.
and also on the inside of the ears. Once the Carabelle Crimson wash is dry, I use Morgan's bone and I start base painting the teeth. I am using corn red for the eyes. I use a small layer brush and I start base painting the eyes. Being careful around the eye bag and also the eyebrow not to touch that painted area already. And with Troll Slayer Orange, I add a layer on the center of the eyes with an extra small artificer brush. The paint is quite delicate, so I add two layers in the eyes. Now that the head is done, I'm going to move on to the armor. As mentioned in the beginning of the video, I have them separate due to the hat to place it afterwards in. I use lead belcher, however, unfortunately, I lost the footage of the progress. But I used a medium dry brush and gave a supple dry brush onto the armor parts. And for this reason, I did not paint it the skin yet because it is quite a messy paint job. However, afterwards, I'm using Stormhole Silver and again. I start dry brushing with a small dry brush, mainly the armor parts, and focusing on the sharpest features of the armor. Once the messy job was done with the dry brushing, I glued the torso together with the head, yet the spear arm is still... I have it separate from the model in order to have a smooth work on the model. And now I'm going to apply on the armor some Agrax Earthshade wash. I use a medium layer brush and being very neat, especially around the face, not to get the wash onto it. After the wash is dry, I am using Doom Bull Brown. I dilute the paint with water, like a 1 to 3 part ratio, to run smoothly. And I start applying it in some random recess areas of the armor to have it more dirt slash rusted look on the armor. I also mainly apply it around the pins just to give it a nice weathered look. Now I'm going back to use Stormhose Silver and I start edge highlighting the sharpest features of the armor 
and also base paint all the pegs and screws to have them more visible. For this I use a small layer brush and I'm taking my time picking out all these little details. As mentioned, now with the messy job is done, I painted the skin as well on the model and now I'm going to use some Rhinox hide and I paint some nails on the hands. I use a small layer brush and I apply a very little amount on the center of each fingertip. Now I'm going to make a mix of nylac oxide and lamium medium, a 1 to 2 part ratio. And with a small layer brush I start applying it randomly on the recesses and on some of the pins on the metal. Once it's dry it will give a nice oxidized look on the armor. And just to add some more weathered look on the metal, I am using Morphang Brown. I dilute the paint with water, like a 1 to 5 part ratio. I want this color as watery as possible, it's like a wash. And again, with a small layer brush, I am applying it onto the armor. On some of the flatter parts of the armor, I also apply it, first a very thin layer. Once it's dry, then I apply it again and slowly building up the rusted look on the metal. Especially on the feet, I am adding it onto the recesses to get a cool rusted look and also plants together the metal. And finishing the weathered armor with some typhus corrosion, I mainly apply it on the palm of the feet to give it a sort of dirty mud look.
Now I can focus on the cloth slash rope parts. I glued together the torso part with the back armor and hoodie, yet the pole arm is still not attached to the model and I quickly rebase painted them with Abaddon Black just to cover the splodges and areas where I went over with the metallic paints. And then I'm going to use Ashing Grey first and with my trusty old brush I do a dry brushing on the robes. I am being careful especially around the painted areas not to go over on those parts. Then on the top areas I do a bit of heavier dry brushing to give a light effect on the rope. Now I'm going to switch to a small layer brush and with the ashen grey I start picking out the sharpest features of the rope to get a nice smooth blend on the cloth. Following it with Mechanic Standard Grey, I start edge highlighting the sharpest features of the rope. Now I'm going to apply a very thin Nuln Oil Wash on the rope just to get a smoother blend with the grey paints on the rope. It helps especially around the parts where the dry brushed ashing grey turned out a bit too strong and needs a bit more blending. Once the wash is completely dry, I am going to finish the robe with Dawnstone. I am using a small layer brush and I start picking out the sharpest raised areas of the robe, especially on the hoodie to get that nice bright finish for the light effect. On the bottom part, it is really personal how much you wish to make those areas pop out just a little bit more. Now I'm going to paint the polearm wood pole part. For this I use Steel Legion Trap as a base color. I am using a small layer brush, especially around the rider's hand and taking my time not to get the paint over the already painted areas. Then I'm going to apply Agrax Earthshade Wash onto the Steel Legion Drab area. Again, I use the small layer brush around the hands. Now I'm going back to use Steel Agent Drab and with my trusty old brush I do a dry brushing on the pole arm just to pick out all those sharpest features of the pole arm.
and finishing it with some Zendri dust. I use a small layer brush and I start edge highlighting the sharpest features of the polearm wood. Now I'm going to add the tribal marks on the hoodie using Everland Sunset. I use an extra small artificer brush. I have the paint diluted with water, I want to two part uh, water. And I am making small triangles on the edge of the hoodie. Then around two to third part I am making a straight line around the cloth and just some extra triangles and on the tip of the hoodie I am making two thin straight lines going around the hoodie. I am taking my time, I am trying to make it quite thin and with one move just to avoid to make mistakes. If it happens then with Ashing Ray I quickly fix the mistakes. Once it's done then I'm going to use Ariel Yellow and with an extra small artificer brush I start edge highlighting the triangles top right corners and on the straight lines I highlight the top raised surface also where the cloth is highlighted and painted on with the Everland Sunset I edge highlight them to fit with the lighting effect on the hoodie I am using now Balthazar Gold on the Half Moon Trinket that is on its hoodie. I use a medium layer brush and start base painting it. Now I'm going to apply some Agrax Earthshade Wash onto the Balthazar Gold painted areas. Once the wash is completely dry, I am going to use Psychorex Bronze. I use a small layer brush and I start edge highlighting the trinket. Now I can move on to the polearm blade. I am using Dumbul Brown as a base color for the blade. I use a medium layer brush for this. I am going to use now Riser Rust dry paint and with my trusty old brush I do a rough dry brushing on the blade.
Then I'm going to use Lead Belcher and pretty much do the same technique on the blade. Now that the dry brushing is done, I am going to use Valeo Model Wash Light Rust and giving a thin wash on the blade to blend the colors together and give a nice rusted look to the weapon. Once the wash is completely dry, now I'm going to use Stormall Silver and with my trusty old brush again I do a more selective dry brushing onto the pole arm then I switch onto a small layer brush and I base paint also the pins and also it is good to base paint on the model as well. And to give it more weathered look, I am using Typhus Corrosion. I am applying it on the center part, just underneath the sharpest turning point of the blade. Then with my finger, I just remove the excess paint from the blade. Doing it right will give a more random, not overpowered, darker contrast in some of the areas for the blade. The model now is pretty much done, however there is still the base, the mushroom and the tiny moon spider mutant that is missing. First I'm going to apply Lustrian Undergrowth on the base randomly, but leaving out some space. While it's still wet, I am going to apply Sterland Mud on the areas which I left out empty and trying to blend the two techniques paint together. And finishing the base for now with some Death World Forest, I quickly base paint just the soil area around the mushrooms. Now it's a bit of different uh, color than the Lustrian undergrowth, so I'm just trying to get a little bit over as well onto the undergrowth to blend together nicely the two colors. While the base is drying, which is quite a long time, I can focus on the tiny moon spider mutant. I have it assembled, I drilled a small hole just underneath and pinned it with a metal rod, which after I pinned into an old cork to get the painting process easier due to its size. And I base painted it with Mechanica Standard Grey. So first I'm going to use Everland Sunset and I start base painting the body of the moon guy 
I do apply multiple layers in order to achieve an uneven coverage on the model. After that, I'm going to apply some Reikland Flash Shade onto the Everland Sunset Painted areas. Once the wash is completely dry, I use Everland Sunset again and with my trusty old brush I start dry brushing mainly the flattest surfaces on the body just to get a nice smooth transition and leaving the darker recesses areas clean. Then I'm going to use Irreal Yellow and again with my trusty old dry brush I quickly dry brush the top raised surface of the moon body then I switch on to a small layer brush and I start layering the eyebrow, the eye socket, the nose, the mouth, I'm just picking out a little bit more, the, more of the tip of each moon shape, just to get a better highlight onto it. And finishing the skin by using a sharp T-bone, I do an edge highlight on the sharpest features on the face and also the tip of each point of the moon shape. Now I'm going to apply Kerberg Crimson Wash inside the mouth which will give a nice contrast to the teeth and also I apply it onto the eyes. Once it's dry, I am going to use now Screaming Skull and I start base painting the teeth and I am leaving the recesses red to get the contrast with the mouth. As for the eyes, I am using Pallid Witch Flash as a base color. I use a small layer brush and here as well I am leaving recess area out to keep that reddish contrast on the eyelids. Now I'm going to use Abaddon Black and with an extra small artificer brush I paint some irises for the eyes and with white scar I put a dot onto each iris on the top right corner for this I'm using my Psycho Brush from Army Painter which does the job nicely.
As for the insect style legs, I quickly repainted them with Mechanica Standard Grey and I am applying Known Oil Wash onto them. And once the wash is dry, I just use Dawn Stone and with a small layer brush, I layer and edge highlight the legs. Now the only thing left are the mushrooms and finishing touches on the base. First I'm using Record Flash as a base color for the mushrooms. I am being very careful, especially around the feet where it meets with the mushroom not to get the paint on it. For this reason I am using a medium layer brush just to avoid mistakes during the painting progress. After that, I am applying Seraphim Sepia Wash onto the mushrooms. While the wash is drying, I quickly apply some Agrax Earth Shade, mainly on the base surface, but also on the very bottom of the mushrooms to blend together nicely with the base. Once it's dry, then I am using again a wash, this time Druki Violet, and I apply it with a small layer brush underneath the cap onto the gills and also a little amount onto the rings too. While it's drying, I am applying a second wash of Seraphim Sepia onto the caps. Now I'm going to use again Druki Violet and I apply a second layer onto the gills. And finishing the gills with uh, no oil wash, I just apply a very 
small amounts, mainly onto the deepest recesses. Now that all the washes has been applied, I am going back to use Record Flash and I start layering mainly on the stems, the skirt and on the vulva, leaving out the cap. I also add a little amount on the gills and I do mainly like a edge highlight. I am going to use Morgus Bone and with my old brush I do dry brushing on the top of each cap. And finishing the gills with some palette witch flash, I use my extra small brush, the cycle, and I do an edge highlight onto each gills just to pop them out a bit more. Finishing the base with some Elysian Green, I use my trusty old brush and I quickly dry brush the whole surface of mainly focusing around the previously painted green but I go a little bit over to the Sterling Mud as well to blend the whole thing together. What's left is to apply some more tame turf onto the base and as you can see the loom boss on giant cave squig is ready to jump into battle ferociously. If you enjoyed this content, please do subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button to reach out for more hobby painters that may find the video useful or helpful. And also hit the bell button if you wish to be notified about future video tutorial contents. Thank you so much for watching and being with me in this epic painting journey. Cheers!